Amplify Science Phase Change Unit Chapter 1, Lesson 1 1.4, Weird Water Events. And as with all lessons, we begin in the lesson brief to remind ourselves that if there are any materials during this lesson we need to access, uh, we have the projections, we have printables, and often videos available to us in this lesson brief. We're going to hop over to the warm-up. Now in this warm-up, there are two screens. Uh, the first one is it gives you some text about a scenario and you're going to respond. And once you've responded, you're going to go next to the second screen where they introduce you to a term pronounced refute. So to produce evidence that goes against a claim. Now I'm going to open up the projection for you. And again, you can see this in the lesson brief. How scientists refute claims with evidence. One of the biggest misconceptions about science is people think we positively prove things. In other words, we give evidence to be sure an answer is correct. But actually, the only way to truly do that is to look at a claim and attack it and try to prove it not true. If we have an example that doesn't work for something, we can say, well, we know that isn't always true. But because there's an infinite number of circumstances that can arise, we can never truly say something is guaranteed to happen. So science goes about using what's called fallibility. We can take an idea, and if we attack it with our best effort and learn what we can, we can only prove it wrong. Only the best ideas stand up to criticism again and again, and once we're confident that we've attacked it to the best of our ability, we start to say, hey, wait a minute, this, this is an idea that seems to be consistent in the universe around us, and that's how science moves forward. So scientists refute claims with evidence. Sometimes evidence may be used to refute or go against a claim. Refuting evidence may show how an aspect of that claim is not possible, and that's how we rule it out. At some point, scientists may decide to eliminate or get rid of a claim if the refuting evidence is strong enough. However, ideas may change as new evidence is gathered. So science is not something that is static and stays in one place. It's always changing, and we're always attacking our ideas, finding ways to refute those ideas, and when we can't, those ideas get stronger and stronger. So once you've seen that second screen, uh, be sure to hand that in and that'll complete the warm-up step. In step two of this lesson, you're going to be actively reading, something that happens quite frequently in this curriculum. So we're not going to go over the, the details of actively reading. We're just going to remind us of what that means. So there is an article set that includes four articles from Weird Water Events. And if you click on the link, the articles will open. But before we take a look at those, uh, we want to remind ourselves what active reading is. It's when we think carefully about what we read and we pay attention to our own understanding, those thoughts that happen in our head that are not in the text. As we read, we annotate the text to make record of our thinking. We highlight challenging words. We take notes, record questions, and make any connection to our own experiences. We examine all visuals on the page. When we see pictures, when we see diagrams, we don't skip over them. We spend extra time there considering how they connect with the text. Why were they put there? What are they telling me that isn't necessarily in the words? And after we read, we're going to discuss what we read with others, which may be difficult at home, uh, but it's going to help you better understand the text if you have that opportunity. So we're going to go ahead and open up again by clicking on that link. And I have the article set already open. Again, it's four articles. It's going to look like four pages. The first one is titled Weird Water, and it's the introduction. And if you choose to read this, uh, this is where you would. And I can demonstrate uh, where you would be able to highlight and annotate. Uh, you can highlight, you can make a note. And also in the note section, you can use hashtags and you can reference materials using hashtags later on. Uh, also, if you need uh, audio, the audio icon is there and read to you. Uh, up in the upper right, you have some tools in your library where you can access your annotations and your notes later on. If the introduction doesn't interest you, you need to scroll to the bottom, hit the next button, and you'll get to the second article, Flash Floods and Slot Canyons. Preview that. If it's interesting to you, read it. The next article, Glacier Caves of Iceland. And the final article, Frozen Niagara Falls. Nothing says you can't read all four of them. If you're like me and you're super curious, you're not going to let an article go by unexplored. But you're going to actively read. And in that reading, I'm going to open up a projection for you. 
we're going to tie back to these three claims. Claim one, claim two, and claim three came from an earlier lesson about what we think happens to molecules when things change phase. So the purpose of reading these articles is to gain more information to try to answer uh, or choose which of these claims is, uh, is backed by the most evidence. So as you read, uh, before you do, you might want to refresh your memory about these claims. And if you need to, go back to the lesson brief, open up the projections, look at the claims, and keep them in mind as you read, as you annotate. If you get evidence that supports or refutes any of these claims, you're going to want to put that in your annotation so you can refer back to it. In step three, we have a student-to-student -student discussion. Now, this can be difficult since you're at home, but I encourage you, if you have someone else in the family to talk to or explain this to, it might be beneficial. Uh, you could also do it over a video call or email or some other connection that you have with someone else. Uh, in the classroom, we often use the hashtag share, discussed, or present to keep track of which things we want to uh, remind ourselves to talk about, which ones we've already talked about, which ones are important enough that we want the whole class to know. There's a second screen. Uh, in which after you've had a chance to discuss, and again, if you don't have anyone to discuss, then you know think about the connections you made in your annotations to the topic and which claim it might support best. But you're going to come down here and uh, answer with this multiple choice question about your ability to actively read, and then hand that in, and that's step three. In step four in this lesson, we're going to head back to the phase change simulation. And you can launch it by clicking on the link in the instructions. And when you get there, uh, the instructions tell us to click on a single molecule, and we're going to take some screenshots. So I'm going to hop over to the simulation and show you what they mean by that. So here are all of the molecules. And again, we don't really know what they look like. So to simplify our understanding, they simply are represented by round balls. So a water molecule is any one of these round ball looking structures. And if you click on them, it highlights them. So they tell you, click on any one of those you want. So I'm clicking on the first one. You can see now that it's highlighted in red. And then I'm gonna play that simulation. And you can see what's happening as they bounce around. Uh, they're leaving a track of what was going on and how that molecule has been moving. So you're going to pause the video at the different points in which you think the model is representing a solid, a liquid, and a gas. So if I think the molecule is in a solid state right now, I can see some of its movement. I'm going to stop it and screenshot this. Okay. When I do that, and I head back initial page with the instructions, I can then upload that screenshot. And so it's going to be a screenshot that represents molecule moving in solids. And then I'm going to go over here. And again, I can pick different substances uh, in different states and click on any molecule I want. And again, it highlights it in red. And then I'm going to play that video. And now I notice my molecule's moving a lot more. Okay, I have to decide what does that mean? Does it, is this still a solid? Does this look like it's a liquid? Does it look like it's a gas? And when I'm ready, I'm going to pause it, take a screenshot. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to upload that as either a liquid or a gas. And I'm going to do that three times. I'm going to find a molecule in a state of motion that represents a solid, a liquid, and a gas. Once I've done that, I'm going to respond in the three questions below. Notice one, how it's tracking in solids, molecule tracking in liquids, and how does it track in a gas. Once you've explained that to the best of your ability, you're going to hand that in. And that is the end of Lesson 1.4.